We have Simon Gregg for Barnyard Industries. Uh, yeah, my name is Simon Gregg. I'm a graduate student at, NC, at North Carolina State. Uh, I'm actually working uh, in the urban water resources realm and mitigating urban stormwater pollution. But I got involved with the Nutrient Recycling Challenge uh, in phase one, and uh, we submitted on uh, manure treatment with black soldier flies. And uh, I got some collaborators, uh, a PhD <coughs> candidate at Urbana Champaign in entomology and uh, organismal biology master's student uh, at ASU. Um, and so we're kind of looking at, at this from a different approach and kind of seeing what, what, what has nature provided for us in, in the form of organic waste treatment. And, and actually insects have uh, been useful to humans for thousands of years. Uh, you know, population growth is, is creating a burden on all of our systems that we currently have, you know, and, and insects are in abundant in, on earth and provide, many of them have niche roles that they do uh, in natural systems, whether it's recycling nutrients and organic matter. And, uh, you know, it just, and, you know, we've harvested and cultivated silkworms for silk for thousands of years, uh, you know, and even now, uh, ladybugs are being used uh, to combat aphids in uh, integrated pest management and we're shipping pollinators across the country. So there's a big connection between insects and humans. And black soldier flies are, are kind of one of those insects that, that are begin, beginning to gain some traction in, in their ability to recycle organic waste. And they're native to many parts of the Americas and really common in the southeast and they're not a pest. Uh, the, the adult insects, the actual fly, doesn't even have developed mouth parts. It doesn't bite, it doesn't eat, it's not attracted to humans or habitation. And, and because of this, the larvae stage uh, of the insect, which is, which is you know, a maggot for lack of a better term, eats a tremendous amount of, of whatever its substrate is and it incorporates the composition of that substrate into its biomass. Um, and you know, a lot of research, just for future reference, a lot of research uh, uses the flukes of cardboards. These insects like really small places to lay their eggs, and so that's kind of a, a crucial thing that we can use uh, when we start designing <coughs> these insects in mind. Um, they reduce manure dry weight by <coughs> approximately 50%. Um, they reduce mass accumulations of nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium you know, by greater than 75%. Uh, the larval biomass, the biomass of the larvae seen here, um, is approximately 40% proteins and 35% fats. Uh, they reduce housefly populations around manure by greater than 95%. You know, and they suppress pathogens. You know, and that that's definitely an area where we need to have more information about how you know the interactions with with pathogens and. Uh, but a lot of the research uses uh, these insects, they, they, they go through metamorphosis from this larvae stage to the, adults, uh, the adult fly stage. And so the, the larvae, when they're ready to become an adult, will migrate away from their substrate. And so in the research, a lot of people have utilized just sloping ramps, approximately 35 degrees that allows, seen here, these black soldier fly pupil are leaving their substrate and will essentially harvest themselves into whatever your vessel is for capture. You know, and then you have that, that biomass of 42% proteins, 35% fats that's harvested for you. Uh, you know, uh, the research has documented some commercial feed rates, uh, a tenth of a pound to, you know, just under half a pound per square foot, uh, dry solids. You know, and, and, and it's also, we've realized that uh, if we increase the feed rates, we can increase the nutritional value of the biomass. Or if we decrease the feed rates, we can increase the dry matter reduction. So depending on what your end goals are for your treatment products, you can tailor the loading rate of your larvae uh, or the loading rate of your manure um, to, kind of, to kind of tailor uh, your byproducts. But uh, doing some preliminary analysis, if we had like a 2,500 head grow finished swine operation, 
you would be looking at you know approximately six to six thousand to sixteen thousand larvae per square feet of treatment area uh, and I think you would maybe need like 700 to about 1200 square feet of treatment area for manure uh, based on about nine inches thick of manure and so we need a lot a lot of these insects uh, and you'd be harvesting you know something like 200 to 2,000 tons of larval biomass annually you know and uh, the research where a lot of this is originating uh, incorporated a dewatering belt beneath the, the slatted floors of a hog barn to facilitate uh, the separation of urine and liquids and then the raw biomass goes straight to larvae treatment uh, and, and this is kind of important because some research now is starting to look at the separation of, um, of urine and extraction of urea from these liquids which would be very good for the economics of the black soldier fly but also the total treatment system and it really would eliminate the use of a lot of the water that's associated with flush down uh, and the clean of, of swine barns. Um, you know here again the use of the cardboard but this experiment is looking at beneficial bacteria so bacteria that's associated with the larvae um, has been inoculated onto this cardboard and uh, the female black soldier flies are much more attracted to that so if we can take advantage of those bacteria and incorporate them into some kind of harvesting mechanism we can increase the, um, the uh, position of insect egg laying on, on our uh, harvesting mechanisms and then this is really where we're working at Barnyard Industries we're lo looking at the adult black soldier fly and how do we uh, optimize and efficiently produce trillions of eggs so that these eggs can be supplied to manure treatment systems uh, to, to, manage, to manage manure in this new way with larvae treatment. Uh, and and uh, currently a lot of the, the literature kind of struggles with uh, lab reared colonies the the breeding rates and um, are just not are not as well as they are in wild populations and so that's kind of where we need to improve the the mating systems and adult enclosures so that we can increase the efficiency of breeding in uh, in uh, essentially commercialized insect production systems um, the quality of the food and the availability of water has been shown to improve, uh, increase the longevity of these adult insects' lives and improve, improve, increase the number of eggs that they produce. You know, so taking some of these things into account, we begin to design some systems and to meet that larvae demand that was previously stated, we'd need, you know, some between 20 and 70 insects per larvae that we need in treatment. So you get to you get to need a lot of insects. Um, and this is a conceptual model that we've developed uh, incorporating some kind of enclosure and then beneath it uh, we've got to include systems that that really optimize unit functions that need to happen to reduce labor currently the systems that are employed for uh, for producing eggs are mainly research-based systems that are bulky and labor-intensive and uh, require a lot of time uh, but we can design better systems uh, that take advantage of beneficial bacteria for increased inoculation or uh, egg laying, you know, allow uh, naturally cycling of insects. If we have egg, uh, some kind of egg uh, uh, harvesting systems, egg cartons that insects are laying on and have that beneath uh, a larvae rearing tray, uh, the presence of, um, of larvae itself increases uh, female oviposition and so the ability to allow some eggs to hatch and be reared as larvae and then we can incorporate that, that sloping floor and allow them to <coughs> emerge into an adult enclosure and, and begin the adult life cycle again. Um, 
then it would it would really decrease the the input of of time and labor associated with managing these systems. You know, furthermore, we can design some of the floor because these adult insects only live about 10 days. So, you know, there's continually adult insects dying, and so the need to keep the 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 inside of this enclosure clean. Uh, we'll need to design the floor of this tray to uh, to remove those insects, and so some type of conical or sloping floor is uh, is a conceptual idea that we have. Uh, the egg clutches that females lay are approximately like 200 to 600 eggs per female. You know, and, and we're looking about you know to millions of neonate to to manage that 2,500 head swine operation. And so, really, what this is looking like is you know, regional egg production facilities where we have these optimized adult enclosures that maintain the environmental conditions and uh, really increase the efficiency of mating and egg harvesting that allow uh, commercialized production of these insect eggs and then package and delivery to uh, treatment, manure treatment facilities. Uh, the, uh, there's been a lot of feeding trials the larvae uh, have been determined, you know, to be good replacements for soy, bean, and fish meals. They they're loaded with beneficial amino acids. There's been research on extract extraction of lipids and proteins for bioenergy and pharmaceuticals. There's a lot of chitin. They have chitin in them. Uh, the manure residues are similar to vermicompost, and so there's marketability on the residue side. Um, globally. The regulations on insect protein meals used in commercial animal feeds is changing. The European Union has approved insect protein meals for use in aquaculture and has scheduled to approve uh, it for poultry and swine uh, in the coming in the next couple of years. Um, but we have to improve our ability to produce eggs and neonate, and we're going to do that by high efficiency environmental controls and some automation of some of these tasks associated with uh, colony persistence and egg harvesting uh, because we really need trillions, trillions of eggs uh, to be able to make this work. But that's it. So, any, any questions? Any burning questions? Um, so can they eat, do they only eat fresh manure or can they eat lagoon stored manure? I, I haven't seen any research on uh, lagoon sludge, but that's that's an area that we need to look into and see if, if that's an option. Currently, most of the research uh, that I know of has been on uh, fresh sludge. Yeah. You say eggs or is larvae is maggots? The larvae is what do the treatment, but we need to produce the eggs. The eggs, mm -hmm. the poop. Mm -hmm. And what do you do with the keratin of the of the poops? Uh, it's used in uh, uh, in pharmaceuticals, I think, for uh, the capsules, like uh, liquid capsules. Yeah, yeah, capsules. Yeah, I have to treat the basically. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Please follow up with Simon Gray after uh, the session if you have more questions. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm.